Hi, this is Julia from the Macedon Public Library. And today uh, I've got some more intermediate book uh, recommendations to make. Um, today it's just two books. Um, sometimes I'll do three. Maybe I've even done four at one point. Um, but I just got two of them. They're longer books. Um, one is a 4.0 and the other one is a 4.5. So they're like fourth grade-ish kind of reading level. Um, and they're, they're, you know, oh, they're somewhat thicker books. Um, and I thought, well, this is, this is enough. Um, the, they, I was kind of actually going for a completely different other like subject theme. Um, but when I started reading the first one, it's like, that doesn't fit with the theme, but I really liked it and I wanted to share it. And then I happened to stumble on another one that I've been wanting to read for a while that fit very well in with the first one. So um, let me just say, uh, they're both stories about kids. These are about real kids. I know I normally like, I like fix fantasy and science fiction and stuff like that. But these are real kids in our real world. Um, these kids could be kids that are down the street in your neighborhood and your school with you. They could even be us. They could even be you. I'm not a kid anymore, but I was a kid. Um, they're, they're just normal, regular kids um, in the real world, but they are making a difference um, and they can be heroes. So just by being themselves. So the first one that I have is called A Home for Goddesses and Dogs. And it's written by Leslie Connor. And um, I don't know exactly what made me want to pick it up, but I, I, it just talked about like a heartwarming look about families. and I don't know, like I needed something nice to read. I just needed something nice. So I'm gonna be reading some notes here. So I apologize for that. But um, the novel is about love and loss and family and finding joy, new friendships. Um, and, and when you have to start new things, how it can be kind of scary, but how, how if you can just kind of be yourself through the whole thing, uh, it can come out really nicely and you can make a difference. So uh, also it's someone learning about how to take care of a dog. Somebody who has never had a dog before. I'm learning how to take care of a dog. So it starts with a life altering new year. So here I'm recording this just in January, but I think this is gonna come out in February. But so the story starts New Year's Day. Um, it's a 13 year old Lydia is our main character and she is uprooted. She's moving from Rochester, our Rochester, New York uh, to a Connecticut farm to live with her aunt following her mother's death. Um, Lydia knows more about loss than most kids her age. Her mother was already sick when her father left the family six years ago. So he's already left them and then her mother died. And now she's going off to live with her, her aunt, which is her last of kin. So her next of kin, it's the only one left. Um, and she moves in with her aunt's family in Connecticut, which I've also lived in Connecticut. So I thought that was kind of cool uh, on a farm. So there's animals and, um, and this, and there was an old dog already in the farm. And within the first week that she moves there, um, they adopt um, a dog, like a rescued dog. Uh, so, so Lydia, I mentioned, she's not really a dog person. She's never had a dog before. She's, she's not a dog person, but this one is kind of trouble because he's a rescued dog. Um, one reviewer of the book actually called him the world's best bad dog. Um, I don't think he was that bad, but he's a little, he's a little naughty. He's mistrustful. He's very slinky at the beginning. Uh, he, he's in the house. He runs off into the woods when he can get away. He barks at things unseen. Well, what dog doesn't? Um, and his new owners kind of wonder about what his past could have been like. So meanwhile, Lydia also doesn't want to be difficult. She doesn't mean to keep secrets, but there are things that she's not ready to tell her new family. Um, like why the box of paper stuff that she traveled with on her lap the whole way from Rochester to the farm in Connecticut um, and that she keeps under the bed right now. Why is that box of paper so important? And why the hole in the wall behind a poster of sheep, I think it is, in her room is getting bigger. The hole in the wall is getting bigger. So what's going on with that? And why something she took from the dog might be the key to unraveling the dog's path. That's kind of interesting. So she struggles with finding and accepting new friends. And she learns that sometimes it's okay to be vulnerable, so to, to kind of put yourself out there um, and to share deep feelings. So my favorite personal characters were Lydia's new friends. Um, the, their names were Raya and Sari, and they adopt her right away. Uh, this is a small town, again, it's a small farming town in Connecticut, and um, they don't get new people very often. And so these two girls from her class at school kind of really just adopt her, and they show her around the town, and they introduce her to um, the different farms, and 
helping her like learn how to take care of the dog and stuff like that. Um, they seemed like really perfect best friends. Like they're really good friends with each other already. And they just bring her in with them, um, which can be really nice when you start off in a new situation. Um, and I really liked how she starts out not a dog person. And then she learns to love and trust this big yellow furry best friend. Um, so I thought it was really, it was a really nice book. So I do recommend A Home for Goddesses and Dogs. I'm sorry, I, by Les, Leslie Connor. I think I might have seen that. Um, so the second one uh, is called Here in the Real World. Back a little bit farther. I don't know if you can kind of see the details a little bit. Um, I was drawn to read this book. Like I said, this was it has been on my um, list for a while. Um, but because of the cover of the book, I like the pictures and um, the quick description because it mentions that the main character's love mentions his love for the Middle Ages, which I love the Middle Ages um, and castles and things like that night. So I shared that already. Plus, he's a bit of an outsider. He doesn't easily fit in with many of the quote normal kids. And that was me when I was a kid, definitely, which probably still me as an adult. Um, and one reviewer called this an ode to introverts, dreamers, and misfits everywhere. So I fit all of those things. So I felt really connected to the main character of this book. Um, his name is Ware, W-A-R-E, which is an unusual person. I don't know why they went with that, but that's okay. Um, the, so the author of this book is Sarah Pennypacker, who's read, who's written other things you might be familiar with. I think Pax is one of them and Nothing else is coming to mind right now. Um, but so we have several of her things already. So where the main character can't wait to spend summer. So his isn't taking care instead of in the winter. This one is set in the summer. Can't wait to spend summer vacation off on his, is his own world, dreaming of nights in the Middle Ages, generally being left alone. He starts out the summer. He's living with his grandmother um, in like a retirement village sort of area. Um, his parents are working extra hours so that they can earn enough money to, to complete paying off of their paying off their home and so they're like okay so you're we're sending you to grandma and so he kind of likes that he has a good relationship with his grandmother and he's kind of left to do the things he wants to do during the day but then grandma has an accident she has to go to the hospital and everything is okay but then she has to go like then for recovery and stuff so so the plans change for the summer and he has to go back and stay at home and because the parents are working so many hours, he's sent to the rec program, the, the dreaded rec program there in the town. Um, so where he must endure what his mother calls meaningful social interaction uh, and whatever activities the so-called normal kids do. So that's so, so he's not allowed to spend the day off on his own at home by himself. He needs to go to the rec program and he'll be around other kids his age and have meaningful social interactions. On uh, the first day, where meets a girl named Jolene, who is a tough, secretive girl planning, planting a garden in the rubble of an abandoned church lot that's right next to where the rec camp is held. Um, soon he starts skipping rec, oh, oh no. and he's creating a castle-like space of his own in this church lot. So it's an abandoned church lot. Um, he meets the girl who is trying to plant a garden there, and he kind of is, is dreaming up ways of making this old church lot into a castle sort of situation. Jolene is not a dreamer. She's very much a realist. So she, she scoffs at him. She calls him a dreamer. He doesn't live in the real world like she does. She calls his world the magic fairness land. Because he says, well, that's not fair. He's like, well, we aren't in where's magic that fairness land. So as different as these two people are, so they are learning how to get together to share this space um even though they're very different people um they do have one thing in common which is that they're finding refuge and some kind of safety and um comfort in this abandoned lot but then their sanctuary is threatened um so there's a couple of different things that, that come in to like oh no what are we gonna do um so where instantly thinks of the knight's code of chivalry um Thou shalt do battle against unfairness whenever faced with it. There sh thou shalt be always the champion of the right and the good. And he vows to save the lot. Uh, so this book kind of looks, lo looks at the question of what does a modern hero look like? Um, what can two kids who don't really have a place in the world do to help this, the, the community as well as them, themselves and each other um, with just being who they are. So they can do a lot and, and they, they do a lot. 
to the lot. Um, and and it was and again it was really good. I liked the the connection between uh, Ware and Jolene. They I I I fit much more with the Ware character, um, but I've had many people who are Jolene like in my life, um, and they are they are a big help and they help make life being right. So uh, I will stop there. I'm not going to read any of it because um, there weren't any specific passages that jumped out. But again, it is. Uh, well, are there a way? Sorry about the light. So, Here in the Real World by Sarah Pennypacker and A Home for Goddesses and Dogs by Leslie Connor. So, again, so Home for Goddesses and Dogs has a female main character. Um, Here in the Real World is mostly a male main character. So, you know, but we can read about each other uh, and it's very interesting. And um, yeah, I hope you can give the books a try. And uh, if you have any books you want to recommend, let us know too. All right, thanks, and we'll see you later. Bye.